Bronchiectasis is defined as permanent dilation of a bronchi and bronchioles. This is caused by destruction of a smooth muscles and the supporting elastic tissue. So it's an irreversible dilation. Remember, permanent. But this time it affects mainly the bronchi and the bronchioles. You can compare that with what happens in emphysema, which is defined as permanent dilation of the airways distal to the terminal bronchioles. The destruction of smooth muscles and elastic tissue here typically is associated with necrotizing infections. So this disorder is not a primary disorder. Instead, this disorder is always related to a primary process such as persistent infection or obstruction. Bronchiectasis is defined as permanent dilation of bronchi and bronchioles. This is caused by destruction of smooth muscles and the supporting elastic tissue. So it's an irreversible dilation. Remember, permanent. But this time, it affects mainly the bronchi and the bronchioles. You can compare that with what happens in emphysema, which is defined as permanent dilation of the airways distal to the terminal bronchioles. The destruction of smooth muscles and elastic tissue here typically is associated with necrotizing infections. So this disorder is not a primary disorder. Instead, this disorder is always related to a primary process such as persistent infection or obstruction. Clinically, the characteristic symptom complex is dominated by cough and expectoration of copious amounts of purulent sputum. Purulent sputum usually contains white blood cells, cellular debris, dead tissue, and mucus. Purulent sputum is typically yellow or green in color and can be seen in cases of bronchiectasis and lung abscess. The diagnosis of bronchiectasis depends on an appropriate history and radiographic demonstration of the bronchial dilation. The development of the bronchiectasis is based on two intertwined processes. The first is obstruction and the second is a chronic infection. Obstruction that is caused by foreign body, for example, impairs the clearance of secretions. So the secretions starts to accumulate, providing a favorable media for superimposed infection. So the secretions and the bronchial wall are infected now. And this induces an inflammatory reaction. The inflammation will result in tissue damage, especially to the bronchial wall. And also accumulation of exudate which will further distend the airways, leading to irreversible dilation. Conversely, a persistent necrotizing infection in the bronchi or bronchioles may lead to poor clearance of the secretions. This is followed usually by obstruction due to the accumulation of secretions and inflammation with the bronchial wall damage resulting again in full-blown bronchiectasis. As we learned, it's a secondary process that happens due to another primary disorder. The most common primary disorders include the disorders that causes bronchial obstruction, congenital or hereditary conditions, and necrotizing or suppurative pneumonia. Let's start with the bronchial obstruction. Bronchial obstruction can be caused by tumors, foreign bodies, and impaction of a mucus, for example. In these conditions, bronchiectasis is localized to the obstructed lung segment. Atopic asthma and chronic bronchitis can also cause obstruction and bronchiectasis. Congenital or hereditary conditions as in cystic fibrosis. In cystic fibrosis, there will be a widespread severe bronchiectasis. This results from the obstruction caused by abnormal visit mucus and secondary infections. Remember, cystic fibrosis is a hereditary disease that affects the lungs and the digestive system. The body in this disease produces thick and sticky mucus that may block the lungs and obstruct the pancreas. Immunodeficiency states is another example, in which a localized or diffuse bronchiectasis develops because the recurrent bacterial infections. Primary ciliary dyskinesia which is also called the immotile cilia syndrome. 
It's a rare autosomal recessive disorder, and it's associated with bronchiectasis and sterility in males. It's caused by inherited abnormality of the cilia. This type of abnormality impairs the mucociliary clearance of the airways, leading to persistent infections. Necrotizing or suppurative pneumonia, particularly the ones that are caused by the virulent organisms such as the Staphylococcus aureus or Klebsiella species. Laparoscopically, bronchiectasis usually affects the lower lobes bilaterally, particularly the vertical air passages. Usually, the most severe involvement is found in the more distal bronchi and the bronchioles. The airways may be dilated as much as four times of their usual diameter. This figure shows the gross appearance of a lung that is involved by bronchiectasis in a patient with cystic fibrosis who underwent lung resection for transplantation. As you can appreciate, the cut surface of the lung shows marked dilation of the bronchi, and those bronchi are stuffed and filled with purulent mucus. The histologic findings vary with the activity and the chronicity of the disease. In full-blown active cases, the main histologic findings are an intense acute and chronic inflammatory exudate within the walls of the bronchi and the bronchioles, disclamation of the lining, epithelium, and ulceration, and this happens due to the severe inflammation. Typically, mixed flora can be cultured from the sputum. The usual organisms include Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, Pneumococcus, enteric organisms, and anaerobic bacteria. When healing occurs, the lining epithelium may regenerate completely. However, the injury usually cannot be repaired completely and abnormal dilation and scarring persist. Chronic cases may have fibrosis of the bronchial and bronchiolar walls and peribronchiolar fibrosis. In some cases, the necrosis destroyed the bronchial and bronchiolar walls, producing an abscess cavity. This figure shows the histologic findings in bronchiectasis. As you can appreciate, at the center of this figure, there is an extensive necrotizing inflammation to the degree that you cannot appreciate the mucosal lining. Mostly, it's discomated. Clinically, bronchiectasis is characterized by severe persistent cough associated with expectoration of a mucopurulent sputum. Other common symptoms include shortness of a breath or dyspnea, rhinosinusitis, and hemoptysis. Symptoms often are episodic and induced by, for example, upper respiratory tract infections. Severe widespread bronchiectasis may lead to significant obstructive ventilatory defects. This can be associated with hypoxemia, hypercapnia, pulmonary hypertension, and core pulmonary. However, with current treatment outcomes have been improved and severe complications of a bronchiectasis such as brain abscesses or the corpalmonale are less frequent.